continue. All right. So we're going to start off with our standing meditation. Try to feel the heat exchange between the hands. And I like to keep my eyes focused on something that's in between the hands but forward. Some people like to gaze down at something on the floor. Pick whatever is going to help you stay focused and calm in the mind. Now we move on to the Qigong, breathing in and out. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Scoop down low, breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. And the closing. Breathe in. And out. Good. Next stretch up. Down. Down.
left side. Right. Left. Right. Neck rotations. Other way. Hands up. Clench the fist. Wrist rotations in. Out. Shoulder rotation forward. Slide the kidneys. Front and back. Chest for the heart and lungs. And center for the digestive organs. And hip rotations. Other way. And separate the feet. Grab the ball weight string. Inhale as you come up. Exhale as you go down. Try to keep your eyes focused on the imaginary ball. And breathing in. Out. Breathe in. 
and it out. Breathe in. And out. Other way. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Shake it out. Feet together. Knee rotations. Other way. And shake it up. Slap the left side. Stomach wash. And top of the head. Warm up the hands, get ready to massage the face, forehead. Eyes. Nose. Mouth. Neck.
thyroid. Kidneys. And shake it out. Eight brocade qigong. Number one, holding up the sky. For digestion, respiration, and the elimination. Breathing in. And out. Breathe in. And uh, breathe in. And out. Breathe in. Out. Breathe in. Breathe in. And out. Excellent work. Now, number two, pulling the bow and shooting the arrow for the eyesight and the kidneys and liver. So for this one, remember, any of the uh, eight brocades that are in the horse stance, you can choose to rise up and down in the stance, or you can choose to sit and hold it. For the sake of the recording, I guess I'm going to rise up and down. But if you feel inclined to challenge yourself, try and stay in the stance. Breathe in. And down. Keeping the eye focused on the nail of the index finger. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Last one. Breathe in. And out. And we close. Breathe in. And out. Excellent work. Now we're going to isolate some of the stances. So we're going to hold the horse stance for 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now we're going to switch to the front stance on the left side and hold it. 10, 9, 8, 
seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and switch sides. And make sure when you're doing this, your back leg is locked and the front knee should be in line with the toe, not ahead of it and not behind it, right in line. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and sit it out. Eight brocades, number three, pressing up and down for the stomach and the spleen. Now, before we jump directly into this one, I want to point out, when you do this, it's not just going up and down. There's a bit of a bend to the arms, specifically on the side that's stretching up. So when you go up, create a bit of an arc and even a little bit of a lean. Don't over-exaggerate it too much, but the target area is here. So you want to stretch that side, and this side is in tight, compressing this side. So the hand that's down is compressing, the hand that's up is stretching. Then you reverse it when you go to the other side. So let's try it for the stomach and the spleen, pressing up and down. Breathing in. And out. Breathe 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 in. And out. And the closing, breathe in and out. Number four, looking back. Same story with this one as number two. You can choose to stay isolated in the stance or rise and sit. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Keep the eyes open wide when you're looking back. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Breathe in. And out. Last one. The closing. Breathe in. And out. Shake it out. Now we're going to stretch our quad muscles. If you need to, find a chair or hold yourself up on the wall. And remember for this one, 
You want to try to keep your pelvis forward as opposed to leaning back. You want to keep this forward and your knees close together. And pull back. You should feel the stretch in your hip and in your quad muscle. And if you are going to hold on to something, that's fine. But I would recommend you just put your hand on it as a just in case. Because you do want to keep your balance, but you don't want to fall. So if you can put light pressure against the wall so that you still feel a little unstable, but, not to, but you have that security in case you lose your balance. Because if you're relying too much on the wall, then your balance isn't going to improve because you're reliant on something else other than your own balance. And shake it out. Next, we move on to number five, wagging the tail. Breathing in. And out the other way. Breathing in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. And shake it out. Next is number six. Jolting back for the immune system. Try to keep the point in between the shoulder blades warm. And when you stretch down, feel free to bend your knees a little bit. And try to get your palms over your feet. Breathe in. And out. Back to center, breathe in. And out as you lean back. Breathe in. And out as you go down. Back to center, breathe in. And out, lean back. Back to center, breathe in. And out as you go down. Center, breathe in. And out. Closing, breathe in. And out. Now we're going to move on to our next set of stances. We're going to move on to the cat stance. But before we do it, this foot, it shoots off to an angle. So it shouldn't be, once we go from the horse to the cat stance, this foot needs to turn a little bit. And then this foot will be pointing this way. There is virtually no weight on this leading leg. And then when you shift, 
same story. That bottom foot has to turn a little bit, and this foot is virtually weightless. Now, if it helps, you can put the foot flat so that you don't have so much pressure on this leg over here. That way it helps to distribute the weight a little bit, especially if you have knee issues, you don't want all the weight on that one leg. So you can put the foot flat to distribute the weight a little bit more. So let's try it. Let's get into that horse stance right quick. And 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, Three, two, one, and the cat stance on the right side. Sorry, the left side. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and switch other side. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Four, three, two, one, and shake it out. Last two for the eight brocade, starting with number seven, staring at the fist with angry eyes. Same story with this one. You can rise and sink in the stance or stay low. Breathe in. And out. Uh, Breathe in. And out. 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 And the closing. Breathe in. And out. Shake it out, last one, number eight. Rising up with the heels to bring energy to the crown. So this one, the feet stand a little bit closer together and you really wanna get that stretch up. And remember to give yourself a little bit of a jolt when you fall down back to your heels. And breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Very good. Now I move on to our sitting meditation. Feel free to sit on the floor, crisscrossed, or on the chair, wherever you feel most comfortable. So for today's sitting meditation, I want you to try and focus on the breath. Try to keep count in your head. Now they say in meditation practices that you want to try and empty your mind and be free and all that stuff. It's kind of hard to empty your mind when you have a million thoughts running around. So as opposed to going from 100 to zero, we prefer to go from 100 to one, which is a lot easier. So go from the million thoughts that are going into your head and as opposed to trying going straight for zero, go for the one thought of the breath. Focusing on breathing in and out. And whenever you're ready, begin.
and open your eyes. Now we're gonna move on to our stretching today. If you don't feel comfortable stretching on the floor, feel free to grab a chair. Today I'm gonna to be stretching on the floor, but I'll be explaining the variants as we go along. So our first stretch is gonna be the butterfly stretch. Feet together, try to get your knees down to the ground. Now if you're sitting on a chair, you're gonna put one leg up and stretch it this way. And at this point, you just wanna try and get your knees as close to the ground as possible. Using your elbows, you can press down. Heads down, try to get them as close to your shoes, if not on your shoes. And at this point, if you're sitting on the chair, switch your legs. Right leg out, stretch forward. If you're sitting on the chair, you do the same thing, but sitting on the chair. And on this one, you wanna pull your toe back and try to get your forehead as close to the knee, if not on the knee. And switch. And open up, so straddle split. For those of you on the chair, you can put your feet together and stretch forward. And on this one, same story. While your feet are open, you wanna try and stretch forward, get your head as close to the ground as possible, if not on the ground. And for those of you on the chair, you're gonna repeat the last two stretches we just did. Everybody else, stretch to the right side, trying to get the head to the knee. And switch sides. And shake it out. Now let's move on to working on the 24 postures. Okay, so we've gone over the walking. So let's jump straight into the form where we left off last time. So I'm just gonna go over everything very slowly in detail first, and then I'll add more to it. So feet together, hands on the side. Now you're gonna bend the knees 
sink down low, raise the left foot, step out to the left, and shift the weight back to center. You're gonna bring the hands in front, raise up, bring them down, flex the wrists, and go down. Now you're gonna turn to your right, rise up, turn the palms, turn to your left now. Now you're gonna pick up the right foot, turn it, put it down, grab the ball and shift back into that cat stance that you practiced earlier. Then from here, you step out and brush the horse's mane. Try it again. This time with a little bit more emphasis on the breathing. Right. I'm gonna try and do it on the other side so that you can see it better. So I'm gonna be going this way and it should look the right way for you guys. I've not done this before, so wish me luck. <laughs> All right, so you're gonna bend down Raise the left leg, step out, and shift to center. Bring the hands in front, rise up, sink the elbows, flex the wrists, and come down. Now you're gonna turn to your right, raise the hands, Turn the palms, come across, then you're going to pick up the right foot, turn it, and grab the ball. Shifting back into the cat stance, then step out, and part the horse's hand. Was that better? <laughs> Give me a thumbs up if that works better for you guys. No? You prefer the other way? Okay. All right. Let's do the other way. All right. So, sink down. Rise with the left foot. Step out. And shift back to center. Rise up. Sink the elbow, flex the wrists, and stretch down. Turn. Rise up. Turn the palms. Drag across. Turn the right foot. Grab the ball. And brush the horse's mane. All right, so let's add on to that. But before we do that, just want to go over some quick detail. So with the grab the ball, a lot of people like to keep their elbows up. You want to try your best to keep your elbows relaxed. You don't want it to be too down, and you don't want the ball to be too small. So the, the top hand is about throat height. The bottom hand is right below your belly button. And the elbows, as opposed to keeping them straight, keep them relaxed and down. Now with the brushing the horse's mane, when you shift forward, remember everything has to move together. So the, the waist, the chest, the waist, the hands, the feet, everything has to reach the end at the same. And the hard part is A, getting all that synchronized, and B, ending where this middle finger is in line with the front of your toe here, and the palm is also on that same line. That's the hard part. You, it's not always going to be perfect, but as time goes by, you get it as close to perfect as possible. So the next set of movements is repetition. So you did all this. You can count this as one. So this counts the first repetition. Now from here, 
you're going to do the grab the ball again, but you're going to do the walking pattern that we worked on a few classes ago. So you're going to shift, turn to your left, and shift forward. At this point, you should already be grabbing the ball. Then you step and brush the horse's mane again. This time, your right leg is forward. So that's rep number two, and then you do it again. Shift back, turn to your right this time, grab the ball, shift forward, step, and brush the horse's mane. So there's three repetitions of brushing the horse's mane and grabbing the ball. The first one starts at the very beginning. A lot of times, even when I practice, I kind of get confused and forget to count this one. And then when I do three extra, I end up on the wrong side. So if you end up on the wrong side, it's probably just because you forgot to count the first one. Because I kind of see the first one as part of the opening. But that's okay. All right, let's try it again. Feet together, hands on the side. This time we go over the breathing. So sink down as you inhale. Step out and go back to center. Exhale. Draw the hands forward. Rise up and inhale. Sink the elbows, flex the wrists, drag down and exhale. Turn, rise up and inhale. Turn the palms, drag across and exhale. And grab the ball. Inhale. Step, brush the horse's mane and exhale. Inhale as you shift, turn, and grab the ball. Shift forward, step, brush the horse's mane, and exhale. That's two. Shift back, grab the ball as you inhale. Shift forward, step, brush the horse's mane, and exhale, and that's number three. Now, since for the most part, if you know how to do the walking, you know how to do that part. So the next part is um, why crane spreads wings. So to explain it, I'm going to face forward, and then I'll do it going that way. So you're going to shift your weight back, and you're essentially going to brush the horse's mane with going backwards, as opposed to going forward, going back. So you go back, and once the hand is almost like a little bit above your head, you go forward into this position. It's a very subtle action. There's nothing elaborate about it. The hands essentially switch positions. This one's on the bottom. Now th this one's going to go on the bottom. And this one goes up high above the head. And then you reach your center. And that's going to be our stopping point for today. So if you're going this way, you're going to shift the weight. And then come forward. So let's piece that together. Let's take it from the first grab the ball. So we're going to do our three reps. Step out and brush. That's one. Then shift back. Turn. Grab the ball. Shift forward. Step and brush. This is two. Shift back, turn, grab the ball, shift forward, step and brush, that's three. Now from here, the hands are going to switch positions, you're going to sink back in the stance, and then turn your chest to face center. So in that position, your weight's on the front leg, well, when you're in the front stance, it's more or less evenly distributed. You're gonna shift the weight from the front to the back. So you shift it to the back. And then as you reach center, you're in that cat stance position. Now, just like I explained earlier, if you have the knee issue, you do wanna distribute the weight more so on the front leg and on, more on the back leg, of course, to get the strengthening, but 
a little bit more evenly distributed as opposed to 100% on this leg. All right, now let's take it from the top. Sink down, raise the left foot, step out to the left, and shift to center. Draw the hands forward, rise up, sink the elbows, flex the wrists, and drag down. Turn to the right, raise the palms, turn the fingers, and drag across. Going to the left, turn the right foot, shift back and grab the ball. Then from here, step out with the left, shift forward and brush the horse's mane. This is rep number one. Shift back, turn to your left, grab the ball, shift forward, step, and brush the horse's mane. This is rep number two. And shift back, turn to the right, shift forward, step, Last rep, rep number three. And shift back, changing the hands to white crane spreads wings. Any questions on that? Nope, all right, cool. So, something that I do wanna cover is practicing at home. So in class, we do like a minimalistic class. So we do the three reps of each Qigong exercise. We do the warm up, and then we do the Tai Chi. We do intermittent stretching, intermittent stance work, which is something that I just kind of thought I'd throw in there because if you don't get that strengthening in the legs, you don't maximize your benefit. Now at home, especially with the Qigong, you should try and go for six reps six reps each. And so the way I would do it at home is do number one, six reps, number two, six reps, and then stretch. Number three, number four, stretch. Number five, number six, stretch. Number seven, number eight, stretch and meditate. And then move on to the form. That way you can kind of sort of create some semblance of balance because if you just go through it, your, your legs are gonna be killing you. Especially if you're, the type of person that just wants to hold this the whole time, your legs are not going to be feeling very bueno. Long term, yeah, you're going to get a lot stronger, but short term, you're going to be burning, which is good, but you know, I'm going to control that a little bit. Um, and the second thing is when we're doing the Qigong, when we're doing the stance work throughout, honestly, throughout the, the entirety of the class, you want to try and keep a meditative mind state. Now that's a little bit difficult to do once we start doing the stance work. And I can attest to that because I know how stance work feels. I start, I was, I was a beginner once, you know, many moons ago and it hurts. And all your mind wants to do is think about how it hurts and how you don't want to do it. But that's where the mental training comes in. Sure. It hurts, but you have to kind of talk yourself out of it kind of zone out and stay into a meditative state to say, no, this pain is, it's, it's not going to get to me today. I know that this pain is going to make me stronger, so I'm going to do it. And you do it. And the people that suffer through it, they get stronger and stronger and better and better, and their quality of life overall improves. So with that said, the home practice is essential. We say at the Kung Fu School that the good student is made at home. And I can attest to that because the students that don't practice at home, they're always forgetting their movements or they're always struggling through class. And I can honestly tell you, I haven't had a hard class in probably like the last four years or so. And that's talking Kung Fu and Tai Chi. So it's not that the classes are getting easier. It's just that since I practice at home, I'm getting stronger, I'm getting better. I'm improving myself, so the class gets easier to me, even though in a technical sense, the consistency of the difficulty of the class has stayed the same. 
I'm the one leveling up. The class isn't going down. So the same thing for you guys. If you're struggling in class, if your legs are burning, if it's difficult for you, that's perfectly okay. It was difficult for me when I started. So that's a normal part of the process. But you have to make the decision to say, okay, I kind of don't want class to be so difficult, so I think I should start practicing at home some more. Or maybe you do want class to be a little bit more difficult so that you can get stronger, so you push yourself more, and that's great. But if you're going to push yourself at class, you should also push yourself at home. As always, we say, you know, the mother of skill is going to be repetition, time and time and time again. So if there's nobody has any questions, all of one student. <laughs> then we are good to go.